Former Prime Minister Ariel Sharon is in critical condition. Palestinian ambassador to Prague killed in an explosion. Jerusalem Post legal correspondent Yona Jeremy Bob weighs in on the NSA. And Motorola to create smartphone-based network for the Israeli army. Shalom and welcome to the Jerusalem Post News. Here are the headlines for Thursday, January 2nd. Former Prime Minister Ariel Sharon is in critical condition, the head of Sheba Medical Center at Tel HaShomer Hospital said during a Thursday press conference. Professor Zev Rothstein told reporters that Sharon, who was reported to have been suffering from serious kidney failure, was not on dialysis, but that doctors were administering antibiotics due to numerous infections and the failure of many vital organs. Uh, he is under, uh, I would say, our treatment, uh, but we feel that the situation is critical and some danger is expected for his life. Because in this situation, in his age and his, in his condition, uh, this uh, critical malfunction of some of his uh, internal organs are threatening his life. Sharon, the 11th Prime Minister of Israel, has been in a coma since his January 4, 2006 stroke. The Palestinian Authority's ambassador to Prague was killed on Wednesday at his residence in a blast that Czech police and PA sources said appeared to have been an accident. According to the police and the PA foreign ministry, an explosive device detonated when Ambassador Jamal al-Jamal opened a safe. Jamal, 56, had taken up his post only in October. He previously served as consul general in Alexandria, Egypt. Police spokeswoman Andrea Zolova said the explosive device may have been part of a security mechanism. Podle prvodních indicí policie nepředpokládá, nebo respektive v tuto chvíli zatím vylučuje, že by mohlo jít o nějaký teroristický útok. Spíše vše nasvědčuje tomu, že opravdu k iniciaci toho výbušného systému došlo buď na odbornou manipulací nebo nějakým jiným způsobem, který nám odhalí až další znalecké zkoumání. Now our legal correspondent Jona Jeremy Bob brings us up to speed with the latest developments in the NSA spying controversy, asking, is it legal and should Israel be bothered by it? Thanks, Lauren. Major developments in the NSA spying issue in recent days. Two completely contrary rulings in the United States courts. One saying the entire spying program, again, we're talking about phone calls, emails, and metadata. One saying everything is illegal. One saying everything is legal. Also, major developments with an Ob Obama administration sponsored committee. There's a dispute. What did the committee say about whether the program is legal or not? Why does anyone say this a problem? We do have the Patriot Act, which you can say that Congress arguably authorized all of these things. There's a special court called the FISA Court, which reveals every request. The problem is, out of 33,900 NSA requests to do some of this spying, only 11 have been rejected, basically a 0% rejection rate. So people say that there isn't really protection of privacy rights. How does this all relate to Israel? Well, we found out very recently that apparently the NSA is spying directly on Israeli prime ministers. Ehud Olmert has been spied on, Ehud Barak has been spied on, and one thing that was shocking, whereas, whereas many other foreign leaders also find out that they've been spied on, from Germany, Brazil, Mexico, those leaders said, this is the end of uh, you, our relations with the U.S. as they had been before, everything has to change. For the first 24 hours, Bibi Netanyahu, the Prime Minister, said absolutely nothing about it. And when he finally said something, it was pretty limited. Why was the Israeli reaction so limited? For lack of a better term, we're on the take. The question is how much we're on the take, but basically there's a five-page memorandum of understanding between the NSA and the ISNU, that's the Israeli NSA, that says tons of this information is going from the U.S. NSA to Israel. In fact, there's a debate as to whether or not maybe even Israel is getting to vet some information that the NSA itself doesn't get to look at because Israel is not prohibited from looking at certain information that the NSA in the United States might be looking at. So being on the take, we don't want the program to stop. The Defense Ministry and Motorola have signed an agreement paving the way for a deal on a new encrypted army cell phone network made up of smartphones. The new devices will allow members of the security forces to text, send digital media and encrypted emails directly from the battlefield to the command and control centers and will replace the IDF's current outdated cell phone network known as Rose Hills. 
The touchscreen smartphones, like their civilian counterparts, will have built-in GPS and an 8-megapixel camera and will come with unique applications. An IDF spokesman said the new technology is a revolution in the future battlefields. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry is scheduled to land in Israel this afternoon, his first trip after Christmas vacation. Kerry hopes to push for a deal in the upcoming round of peace talks between the Israelis and the Palestinians. His trip comes just after Monday night's release of 26 Palestinian prisoners, Israel's precondition to the ongoing peace process. That's all for today. We'll be back Sunday with more headlines. Until then, shalom and goodbye from the Jerusalem Post studio.